Mariella Lozano, CEO of the Danon Company, thank you for joining me. Thanks a lot. So Danon is out with a host of new yogurts with non-GMO materials. Walk us through the products briefly. So what we are sharing today is our first step in the, in the journey of the pledge that we announced back in April. And we are putting in the market uh, certain products underneath Danon brand and also Oikos uh, that will have an all-natural uh, type of uh, label. And what means all-natural for us are uh, fewer ingredients, that they are closer to nature with uh, cleaner labels, not synthetic and non-GMO. So, uh, for example, one of our products is the Oikos 0% that uh, today we'll have, uh, before used to have 14 to 18 ingredients, and now we'll have around 10. It's because we took out some ingredients like fructose and carmine, but also the remaining ingredients, they were evolved towards a much more naturality uh, background. So for example, the sugar, we evolved from a beet sugar to evaporated cane sugar, and from a normal starch to a non-GMO starch. And why do this now? Well, I think at the, at the very center and the heart of our strategy is the, our consumer mm -hmm. and uh, listening and uh, being very carefully following the trends. It's, uh, there is no doubt that today Americans in general and millennials in particular are seeking uh, towards uh, products that they are much more natural, uh, non-GMO, but also they are seeking for uh, buying from companies that is very clear what uh, we stand for and also that we can uh, trace to origin uh, where foods uh, are coming from. And will consumers pay a premium for products without GMO materials? So today what we know from uh, millennials is, uh, is a dilemma, in interesting uh, dilemma as a generation because at the same time it's the generation that they are using the most coupons and discounts, so they're looking for the deal, but at the same time it's the majority of the generation that is willing to pay more for value, when really they find that that product could deliver better value for them. And we believe that what we are doing with the pledge, we increase uh, the choices that the consumer could have with our products. So we strongly believe that we are creating value, and at the same time we are working uh, very hard with our friends and partners to be able to offset whatever uh, cost that could come with that uh, long journey. So are they going to pay higher prices? No, today we are saying that we are strongly believing that we are going to create value for our brands and for our consumers and at the same time we are working very hard to uh, offset any further cost. Now there's also a labeling issue here, right? Consumers are going to know what yogurts have these GMO ingredients and which ones don't and the government has also weighed in on this. Yeah, so that's a very important point, Scott, because uh, one uh, important part of our pledge is not only the naturality and non-GMO, the sustainable agriculture practices improvement, but also the transparency. Uh, and in that pledge, we set that one clear that Danon position is that we are willing to disclose any engineering modified ingredient on pack nationwide before December 2017, regardless any federal or state uh, law at the time. Today we are happy to report that we are uh, progressing quite nicely uh, in the transparency piece and uh, we most probably before the end of the year we are already going to have our full portfolio disclosing on pack uh, any presence of an engineering modified ingredient. Now are there any sales forecasts as to how these yogurts will perform now that you're going to be labeling them without GMO ingredients? Not in terms of forecast, but I think there is uh, no doubt, uh, and out there there is uh, public information from uh, Nielsen IRI that uh, stands and proves that the products that they are having this type of positioning, even uh, further with uh, the stamp of a non-GMO verified project, are growing 2x or 3x than the, the conventional uh, products. Now your parent company, Dunone, made a $10 billion acquisition of White Wave last week. What do you think was so appealing about White Wave for Danone? Well, first of all, we are very happy that our parent company, as you say, uh, announced the desire or proposed acquisition to White Waves. Uh, still needs to go through the regulatory and customary process. Green lights. That will take uh, anything around four to six months. So we are, uh, be, um, we are 
seeing that this uh, deal will be finally closed before the end of the year. Up to that time, it's early stages to elaborate in anything that is around that uh, announcement. But clearly the, the acquisition offer shows Danone's interest in the health and organic space, which White Wave is pretty entrenched in. Yeah, what, what has been announced uh, from Danone is it is clear a perfect match in terms of uh, culture, mission, and, and ambition. So uh, uh, you are mentioning about health, uh, wellness, uh, nutrition. It is in our DNA. Our mission as uh, Danone is to deliver health and nutrition through uh, food to as many people as possible. So uh, in that sense, uh, there is a, a perfect match. Now, aside from this lineup of non-GMO yogurts, what's next for the company? Well, I think, first of all, uh, this uh, pledge in terms of uh, naturality and non-GMO is uh, it's a big undertaking. Uh, it's, a, it's a bold commitment that we have in front because the three flagship brands that we are committing, Danone, Oikos and Danimals, account for a bit uh, more than uh, milk that we use and it less of half of our turnover. So it's a sizable piece. And that's the reason that critical mass for us is very important to be able to work together with friend, friends and partners to be able to go through this uh, journey. So I think still we have a long way ahead with already implementing and executed uh, nicely this pledge. All right, Mariano Lozano, we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining me. Thanks a lot, Scott.